This is the Digital Music Trends uh, coverage of Medium 2014, an interview with uh, Brian Hamilton, SVP of Worldwide Sales and Marketing at Gracenote. DMT's coverage is brought to you by CI, the leading provider of digital delivery services to the independent community on ci-info.com. Hi, Brian, and thanks for joining me. How's it going? It's going great. Thank you. It's great to have you. And so it's good to do a catch up with Grace Note. I haven't had you guys on for a couple of years, I think, on the show. And so lots has been going on. And uh, I think I'm going to go chrono chronologically today and okay. just uh, cover all the bases. But first of all, how was your meeting? So far, so good. It's actually, personally, it's my first meeting. So I see 13 years of Grace Note, and it's my first meeting. It's <laughs> awesome. And so, uh, you know, first of all, let's talk about the, uh, the acquisition by uh, Tribune Corp, Corp uh, back in December. And so uh, you mentioned that it closed yesterday. So uh, how did that come about and, and what does that bring to the company? Um, I think it brings a, it's really all about growth. Uh, I think uh, Tribune has given us the, the, the capital and the funding to grow. They're a traditional media company, yeah. you know, from the, the, the old newspaper business. And uh, they see digital as the future. So uh, uh, they see Grace Note as a key area, especially in music, with our assets there, with our, uh, our, our, our global uh, operations, uh, as a great vehicle to, to help uh, you know, accelerate their growth in the digital media. That's great. And so Grayson has been busy over the last uh, year or so. You had uh, quite a few announcements, uh, but especially on the music front, uh, uh, the last month has been really active. So first of all, you've launched a new uh, product uh, slash uh, initiative, which is called Grace Note Rhythm. So uh, let's introduce it. What is it all about? Rhythm is all about uh, personalized radio and playlisting technology for, for music. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, to, to really, you know, there's 20 million songs in your average cloud service right now and uh, to give people the personalized playlist that they, they really need, it needs a bit of magic. So we, we've uh, we've uh, spent a lot of time thinking about this and putting it together and really come up with a, a very scalable global platform uh, to help give the personalized uh, uh, recommendations, playlists and radio stations to consumers. Great. So what kind of data points is, does it take into account when, when making that, those recommendations? Many. Many. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, we we take you know the seeds by uh, track by uh, artist, but it, it's really looking at the, uh, the the genre, the mood, the era, the tempo, uh, the type of artist. And by type, I mean is it male, is it female, is it yeah. a group, a solo? Uh, so it's taking uh, uh, now with. Uh, probably going to ask about it with like next big sound yeah, it's taking yeah. in the popularity data as well uh, right. it's also using our own internal stats for popularity as well so it's taking in multiple facets of information yeah and of course the grace not uh, primarily a b2b company so uh, who do you uh, envisage as your clients for for grace Note, grace not rhythm anybody with a streaming music service exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah so uh, not just uh, large companies though that even startups could could be interested in absolutely we will open the rhythm apis to our uh, developer program which right. is available to uh, everybody that's, that's perfect and uh, you've been quite involved uh, uh, of late also in the hack days i know that you sponsored the, the london uh, uh, the one in december i think it was yeah. and so how how do you feel about hack days and, and what are your what are your thoughts on that Oh, yeah, I love it. It's really going back to our roots at, yeah. at Grace Note uh, when we were sort of getting going 15 years ago. It was a very, very uh, you know, open uh, program. Obviously, as we tried to actually pay salaries and stuff, we had a very core focus on, on getting our, our revenues going. Now, I say revenues are going; it's uh, it, it's more comfortable, and uh, we're able to you know go out and, and support the developer community again with actually. Uh, a really turbocharged program, and it's great. We're already seeing, uh, you know, supporting everybody from the you know independent developers uh, to actually seeing seeds of uh, new business opportunities coming in through this program. Yeah, sure. And uh, looking at the international spectrum, of course, uh, that's a, a big area of growth for everyone, I think, in the music industry, especially for tech companies that are trying to incorporate data uh, from international territories. So how do, do you approach that? What, what's, what is your international strategy to make sure you cover as many bases as possible? International has been a focus for Grayson from day one. Yeah. And uh, actually, that was my job and <laughs> to, to, to grow the international businesses uh, uh, for Grace Note. So we, uh, we we believe, especially for things like rhythm, uh, you, you need a local touch point. You, you need local knowledge of content. You need local editors to, to really to take it the last mile. Yeah. So, you know, the machine listening algorithms can only go so far. Unless you have the local data points, you can only go so far. So we've been uh, investing a lot in uh, so the Asian markets. In uh, Recently, we've put a big focus in India. That's a, it's a 
complex music genre system. Uh, and then we continue to do that around the world and uh, key, key markets. And also you, you see uh, more startups coming from those territories that are specialized in those catalogs. So that makes absolute sense, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, was, I was surprised to hear, for example, from uh, from uh, from India. I was talking to Mandar at uh, Times Music. And he was saying that 95 percent of the ca- of the music consumed in India is homegrown, and only five percent international. So that's definitely, if you want to capture that market, that's where you have to go. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mandar was actually a good uh, influence to us when we were uh, researching this. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, he, he seemed incredibly well informed on that. And so, and talking about the latest news that came out uh, last week, I think, or a few days ago, it was uh, the new partnership with Next Big Sound. So, Next Big Sound has been establishing itself as, as, a, as a real force of uh, the analytics space uh, in the in the industry. And so, uh, what does that bring to you? Um, you know, it, it really brings you know a platform for taking personalization to, to the next step. Uh, yeah. and, and also, you know, in this social world, uh, get, getting this data, what's trending is really key. So that helps us power, uh, you know, a much more, I say, relevant recommendations that are m- much more timely. Yeah. So uh, I think time has become a, a new variable in the whole recommendation engine. Absolutely. And, and making sure that what, what, is recommended is uh, is what's hot. Then yeah. that that's a really big thing, and it's also uh, you know I, I like the fact that you partnered with Grayson because uh, uh, you know you guys could have easily decided to start uh, like your own analytics service, yeah. but it's not what you're about. So it made sense to partner with somebody else, I guess. You know, you, you can only focus on so many things, so exactly. it's best partnering <laughs> with the best. Absolutely, and uh, and so looking at the. Synergies between video, between audio and video, uh, that's a big area. Of course, uh, you know, we're seeing lots of services doing uh, fingerprinting. You guys do like a really good audio fingerprinting that's used by a lot of companies also as, a, as an API side of things. Uh, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, points of friction and, and you know, in, interlacing between uh, video content and audio content to make sure that music that is, for example, in a, in a movie or in a TV show can be, you know, Fingerprinted by people and recommended and understood. And so, uh, how do you how do you work uh, those two departments? Because you have a very strong video department within Graysnode as well. And how how do do those two cross cross promote and cross work with each other? Okay, so I guess t- two questions there. Yeah, yeah. So, in, in, in terms of our video platform, we're all about you know helping people of explore and find content on the television and again it's a very global play so i think our, our key to success is our uh, you know in about 50 different countries now we're, we're pushing the, the the guide data for the smart televisions uh, but to your point about the uh, audio recommendations we have uh, people like uh Toshiba and Sony uh, and actually LG with their Blu-ray players have uh, integrated our music recognition technology right into the, the hardware. So you can like press a button when you hear a song on, on the TV and be able to identify it right away. And now these are tied into the music services that the smart TVs are providing. Yeah, actually I've got an LG DVD player that yeah. does that. So it's got a, a button on the remote control. And uh, I, ask, I get annoyed because uh, sometimes I forget that I'm streaming from my computer by yeah. HDMI. I'm like, why is it not working? Because <laughs> I'm used to it like on, on TV now. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely a feature that uh, it's there and people are going to use it if it's there, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, say I hope it's a growing trend, but we were seeing a lot more interest in it, and the people that have implemented it has been very successful. Yeah, uh, I guess like one of the things that's interesting in TV space is that a lot of what's happening in the smart TV space is not uh, driven by sign-ins. So a lot of the data that you probably get uh, inquiries are rather anonymous. Do you think that there's going to be more of an integration of? Uh, of user data within that. So for example, like a Google sign-in or some sort of sign-in process so that you can actually get more data around the demographics of who's who's uh, trying to get what and, and what kind of audience you have. Yeah, I, I believe so. I think personalization is really key to the you know to the media experience for everybody. And in the home, the TV is normally shared between multiple parties. So That's to have it, it is complicated. You know, you, you don't always want to get the kids' cartoons whenever you sit down after they go to bed. So uh, you know, the, the login is becoming more popular. And also, actually, a number of the TVs are putting new technologies like face recognition yes. and stuff like that in there to, to, to really uh, look, look at uh, to automate this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, some people call it a creepy technology, but it's actually quite useful. <laughs> yeah, pros and cons. <laughs> pros and cons to that. That's great. And for the next twelve months, you know, uh, what, what do you see as your as your key priorities uh, going going into twenty fourteen? 
Uh, I think the integration of Tribune is the uh, number one priority uh, yeah. uh, for us. Uh, continuing to you know grow and expand the business globally is really key uh, for our uh, video business. Yeah. Expanding into new territories is uh, is a focus. Uh, with the Rhythm product, really executing on it well and making sure it's a, the, the world's best recommendation engine is really a key as well. That's great. Well, uh, thank you so much, Brian. It was a pleasure talking to you. No problem. Pleasure. Thank you very much. And thanks for listening to the DMT coverage of Medium 2014 from Cannes in France. This is the last day. You can find out more on digitalmusictrends.com or youtube.com slash digitalmusictrends.